All right, hello prospects. We've got another great college profile today. We've got Coach Lopez from Wabansee Community College. I said that right, Coach, right? Well, well Bonzi, but you're, oh, Bonzi. You're, you're better than most. Well, Bonzi. All right, whatever. <laughs> I'm keeping it. It's a great name. Well, Bonzi. All right, and Coach Lopez is here to answer some questions uh, about the JUCO route. Um, you know, why a kid from Western North Carolina with some talent might be interested in going out to Illinois. And um, I'm sure we're just going to talk a lot of, you know, baseball philosophy, recruiting tips, and things that I think you parents and, and players both need to invest a half an hour of your time, sit down, and um, watch one of these interviews, and you're going to feel much more comfortable about the process. So, Coach, thanks for being here. Oh, I mean, no problem. I, I'm, I'm honored that you even asked me. <laughs> Why would you come out to find a little guy from Sugar Grove to put on your show? But I, I appreciate it. Uh, that's great, Coach. I'm, I, I guess it starts with your story, really. Uh, and that's usually the first question and the best question, you know, I think for a lot of these kids to hear is like, how did you get to a community college out in Chicago area? Well, <laughs> what's the story, blessed. the baseball story? All right, definitely blessed. Um, basically, you know, like most 50 year olds, I played baseball in high school, you know, but that's 35, 40 years ago. And I thought I was great. Um, back then, the, the money wasn't as big as it is now, um, so I actually had a better opportunity uh, going to college. I uh, actually went to uh, four of the best colleges in the country and didn't graduate from any of them. So that's the reason why I coach. Um, I don't want to see kids make the same mistake that I made. Uh, by the grace of God, I uh, got hired by the Chicago Fire Department, and I was a fireman for 25 years. During that time, um, I coached my kid and my nephew up through the process. Coached them in t-ball, little league, right up into high school. And then when they left and went on to do their own thing uh, with their college coach and their travel ball coach, uh, they played baseball at a pretty high level. I started coaching because I loved it. Um, I love the exchange every day. I love the challenges every day. They're different depending on the program. Um, I coached at a couple inner city programs in Chicago, and was very we had uh, a lot of success. And one day, just like everybody else, I was out looking for more velocity. Um, I ran into a program at, at Wabonzi on the campus that was put on by the National Pitching Association and Tom House. Um, and I went and took it, fell in love with it, started to use some of the uh, things that they teach. And one day, uh, Coach Unger, Brad Unger, who's my mentor, was looking for some. I volunteered and then slowly, surely worked my way up the ranks. Uh, he moved on to be the athletic director of College of Lake County, and then the spot opened up, so I applied for it. Um, just just a simple baseball story. Started out being a dad, uh, and and then you know, now professionally a coach. Yeah, man. And uh, unlike most dads, like you're probably a great coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you. I, I like to, I like to think that I am. Really, what I try and do is be genuine. Um, I don't lie. If I don't know, I'll, the athlete, I don't know, but I, I'm going to go find out. So I think the willingness to learn, and then you got to put aside your ego. There's no doubt you got to put aside your ego. Uh, and then the other thing is trying to is is trying to be uh, relevant. I mean, you got to stay in tune with the with the athlete, whatever's going on in their life, whatever's going around around like COVID. You know, how does it affect an athlete? You know, and and it's really about relationships. I think um, I sincerely, sincerely. I'm trying to move these guys on to the next level with the most amount of financial support, whether it be academic or athletic. That's what we're trying to do. And then I, I want them to avoid the mistakes that I made. And JUCO is a great place to do that because there's so many different stories coming out. Like some go to take that four year and uh, get that education and go that route. Others are fine after two years. They take that trade, they apply it, and then you get the kid drafted. You know, yeah, like there's so many different routes. I mean, you hit on it. You 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 know just as as well as I, I do what the Darb Juco. But I'm being drafted every every year, essentially, um, the ability to play every day, maybe get a little bit more time to figure out what you want to study. Uh, there's there's so many different benefits uh, for Juco. If I had to do it all over again, my my sons and then my nephew, I would have, I would have implored them to go to the Juco route. The, the flexibility and, and the benefits far outweigh sitting on a bench and waiting to play. Absolutely. Anybody that is involved in baseball as deeply as yourself, um, you know, myself, all these coaches I'm talking to, like a lot of them would say, if I could do it again, yeah. you go. 
no yeah. doubt. Um, all right. That's, what, so, that's one of the things that I would urge parents when they're, when they're dealing with you is to ask those questions. I mean, finding out what is the difference between the N, NJCAA, the NCAA, the NAIA, what, what, is, what does each level offer that's different than the other, the divisions, and then the hierarchy. I mean, there's a lot of D, Division One JUCO schools. They're going to be most Division One uh, NCAA schools. I mean, Wa Wabash, uh, Triton, Triton in our region, South Suburban in our region. I mean, they're going to beat most you know, Division One schools just because of the level of talent that they accumulate. The first question I do want to ask you um, beyond the story is, you know, catch us up on your program. You know, how's the team been performing? You know, what are some of your favorite moments? And, um, you know, just – and those moments can be on field. It can be initiatives you've taken. But, you know, catch us up on on the Chiefs. Okay, so the, our program, um, going back to the beginning, it's 55, 60 years old. Uh, originally, Coach Prince and Coach Randall were very big on fundamentals. Um, and basically, that, that still holds true today. So Coach Unger was a big fundamental guy. And that's what I am. So I am not necessarily looking for, for baseball players. We're looking for the best athletes. So in today's uh, baseball, kids tend to focus on just baseball, where they should be playing multiple sports. It lends so much to the future of what you're going to do at this level. Um, things are faster. The game is, while it, yeah, it is more serious, but it moves at a different pace than what they're going to be used to in high school, what they're going to be used to in travel ball. So we're real keen on fundamentals. Typically, um, as, as the year goes on, we're ranked nationally. Uh, very competitive baseball here on a Division three level. Uh, Oakton Community College won a national championship there in our conference, or in our region. Um, they won uh, three years ago. Uh, Joliet Junior College, a perennial uh, ranked team in the nation, very strong. Uh, so on a daily basis, we have some real solid competition. Uh, Rock Valley is another school that we play against. So our conference, our region is getting stronger. Uh, by So we have to we have to adapt. And that's one of the reasons why I look for athletes. I'm very confident in my ability to help develop a, an athlete, help develop a baseball player. So we're not always looking for the best guy, but we are looking for the best athlete. And then I want a guy to have a chip on his shoulder. You know, they're going to play, they're going to uh, go through the college program in a different manner. They're going to sacrifice, they're going to work hard, and they're going to have focus. So I'm not looking to babysit a guy. So at our level, we really can't miss, <clears throat> and we're looking for guys that are going to be dedicated. Uh, Wabonzi offers a number of different uh, uh, academic uh, support uh, formats. We, uh, we do study hall that's mandatory. Uh, we have assessment center. When a student comes in, they'll be able to find out where they're at, on the collegiate level as far as academics. Um, we also uh, have tutoring that's free that goes along with our program. So there's really three, three facets to the program. There's an academic facet, there's an athletic facet, and there's also the community piece. We do a lot of volunteering in the community. So when you come here, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a young man to come in and he's gonna leave as a well-rounded uh, student athlete that's gonna make an impact at the next school he goes to somebody who's going to make those people around them better, somebody who's going to make his little community better. That's, that's what we're really looking to do. But we want to prepare that guy so when he hits the ground, he hits the ground running. Uh, no four-year college is going to come to a JUCO for a guy that they're going to have to teach the system, teach, teach you know, the program. They want a guy to come in and, and really make an impact. So we really try and set up our student athletes for success right from the beginning whether it be academic, whether it be athletic, or whether it be uh, the community involvement. So the person that, I, that we're looking for is more of a well-rounded guy, um, maybe a little rough around the edges somewhere, or maybe the guy isn't as high as it could have been. You know, for a lot of young men, that light bulb doesn't go on until they're junior in high school, and they forgot, you know, they didn't think about grades their freshman and sophomore year. So the light bulb goes on, and then they realize, oh, my God, I should have focused. Um, but all that stuff that their parents was telling them, grades, 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 that's the first, that's the first and primary focus. It has to be. That's going to really determine where you play. You can be the most talented guy, but if those grades aren't, aren't up to par or your uh, learning ability isn't, isn't up to the level it needs to be, 
that's really what's going to determine where you play and what level you end up at. If I had a poor ACT or a GPA, but I, I did very well in my two years at JUCO, will these four years, do they even consider the high school scores anymore? They still will, <clears throat> will consider depending on the program. So if you're really looking at something like Notre Dame or Duke, you know, they're, they're going to look back at your high school grades. Essentially what the other four-year schools, they're looking for a story. So me as a JUCO coach, when I w were to contact that four-year coach, I I'm putting together evidence to support your story. So if, that's a great thing if I can tell a four-year school, hey, this guy, great in baseball, maybe took it a little bit for granted, didn't hit the books. But, man, when he got to JUCO and he saw the level of competition, the light went on, all of a sudden now he knows what he wants to major in, carrying a 3.8, comparing. So it was the arc, the willingness to commit. Um, that's really what the GPA t tells a coach. It, it tells a coach, A, does the student athlete have the ability to focus on a long-term goal? Uh, two, do they follow directions? You know, if, if, as a coach, if I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to trust the student athlete a lot. So I, I'm going I'm to let them know exactly what they need to do to be successful. So can they follow those directions step by step? Well, if you can carry a if you can carry a 3.0, a 3.5 in your GPA in high school, that probably means that you can follow you can you can follow uh, orders or, or or follow steps. Um, so that's a big deal for, for us. Uh, the last thing a coach wants to worry about is is that the, the student is getting into the classroom, if a student is sitting in the front row, if a student is participating. Um, but e but even more so, if you just take a look at it, it always kind of stood out to me. Like parents would always say, "Oh, coach is um, his favorite players." Well, the reality is, is coaches hate unknowns. That's what they hate. So if I have player A and I knew that player for the last five years, I know when I'm going to get out of that player. Right now, player B comes and competes for that job. You don't have to be equal to that guy. You have to be better than player A. Because I know what I'm getting from player A. I don't know what I'm getting from the new guy. So in order for you to take player A's position, you've got to exceed in, 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 you've got to exceed in a number of different areas, not just be just as good as that guy. You've got to beat that guy. All right? So what the GPA does, it tells me a story. So if I have two, two recruits right next to each other and they both look physically the same, athletically the same, but academically there's that little – difference in GPA, I'm going to go with the stronger kid in the classroom. Uh, so really, you can look at it in, in that regard. You know, coaches recruiting, they really don't know you. They're going to take, they're going to talk to your high school coach. They're going to talk to your travel ball coach. They're going to talk to somebody like you who's maybe consulting the guy. Maybe I've developed a relationship with you. They're going to take all those opinions into consideration. But in the end, they're putting their credibility on the line when they make an offer to a student athlete especially if they put a scholarship behind it. That, that coach is saying to his boss, this is somebody I believe in. So now if that kid comes on the campus and is an issue or is a problem, well, then it calls the, the coach's credibility into question. So all of that has to be considered. And GPA just basically starts to separate you from your, your competition. You know, everybody wants to be the shortstop at LSU. I mean, there's probably, 10,000 in every state that want to be the shortstop at LSU. How do you separate yourself from the competition? That, that's what it comes down to. And GPA is the easiest way to do that. So do they look at it? Yes. Yes, they do. Well, it's student athlete, not athlete, student. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm very particular to make sure I say that all the time. Student athlete. Yeah. yeah. Um, earlier, yeah. we were talking and, and you mentioned it and it was a question I wanted to get to, but I think now's a good time. You talked about how JUCO has D1, D2, and D3. And I'll try to explain that to parents sometimes. They're kind of – they get a little confused. And I, and I say that I, – I try to tell them that a lot of it comes down to region and area and, like, what's available. But, you know, can you take some time to explain, you know, what is the difference in nature between Division One, Two, II, and Three junior college? So, essentially, it comes down to scholarships. How, how many scholarships do they offer? Um, and then also uh, campus on campus housing. All right. So for D1, D2, D3, it may be also like you said regionally. So for instance, in our school, 
Uh, we have 200 student athletes. Baseball is the largest uh, sport on campus. We have 13 sports. So on the baseball team, we generally carry 40. So we're 20% of, of the uh, athletic department. Well, of the 13 sports, we're the only D3 program. All the rest of them are D1, D2. And what it has to do with it has the number of scholarships available. So basically, baseball's D3 because if we were going to uh, go D2, we'd have to offer scholarships, but it would take the scholarships away from those smaller programs. So for us, baseball, it's, it's easy to compete at a D3 level. So it's more of an internal decision that each of the schools make. So um, it has nothing to do with talent level. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, the ability of the players or the, or the intelligence of the players. It has just everything to do with the inside administrative decisions that each school are making. So for instance, in our region, uh, the Chicago schools, uh, colleges are, are division one. Bigger area, uh, more draw, they have scholarships. But each of them, because of the lo locations, are gonna have different issues. Um, whether it be housing, uh, whether it be getting to and, to and from the school. So, so that plays a lot of factor in it. Uh, but really what it just comes down to is, is scholarships and that, that differentiates the levels. Gotcha. And um, as a, uh, you know, a, a community college out in Illinois, uh, we were talking the other day on the phone and you, and you said that you're going to be able to start recruiting out of state again. And I think you said, you know, possibly one third of your roster you're trying to hold for out of state. Mm -hmm. So I've tried to push a lot of these kids down here in the South where I, I truly believe there's more players than spots available at the schools. And, and I encourage them to look other places, look North, look Midwest, but, you know, explain as, as a coach, why do you encourage, you know, kids in different parts of the country to consider coming out to a place like, is it Sugar Grove, Sugar Grove, Illinois? Yeah. Sugar Grove, memory. Yeah. Sugar Grove, Illinois. Yeah. Excellent question. So, man, you really, as a student athlete, as a recruit, when you begin the process, there's a number of questions you should be asking. And I guess the, the number one question is, you know, what is the school offer to me? What's the opportunity in the end that they offer me? And underlying that would be, Man, the ability, the opportunity to play. You know how many how many athletes you already have recruited at that position, size of the roster. Um, you're going to want to know what the junior college or the college even. Uh, what are their strongest programs? So, like for Wabanzi, we're very strong in nursing, automotive, and fire science. Uh, we we tend to we we tend to have a lot of kids looking for those uh, particular fields when they come in already. So you want to know what each school is strong in and then what's the opportunity that's going to lead me to um, the other thing too is what's the coach's you know ideology does it match mine if if the coach likes to play small ball and grind it out and fundamental baseball and you're a big donkey looking to hit home runs i mean you may, you may not fit into that program you may find you may, you may find you don't like the the baseball um so there's so many questions that a student uh, should be looking for. And I guess the bottom line is you should be looking at what are the graduates doing? You know, like for us, it, last year we had 17 sophomores and of the 17, a ton of them are moving on uh, to colleges. Um, seven of them are gonna stay and come back because of COVID. Uh, but typically we graduate every single one of our players. Um, they're gonna get their associate's degree and then they're gonna move on to a four year school. Uh, very rarely do we have a kid who doesn't. So. Now the next question is what schools are they going to and are they playing baseball? So of the 10, eight of them are going on to play baseball and they all received financial support at a significant level. The two that decided not to, it, one of them, it was a very clear decision that he'd rather focus on his studies and his post uh, uh, college opportunities than play baseball. So for him, the university that he got accepted to because of his like, academics was much higher than the athletic opportunity. So that's why he made that decision. And the other one um, just decided to be a coach and pursue the coaching route rather than play. Um, but of the eight, now you want to look at those guys, where are they going? So for us, um, our, our top athlete went to a, a very uh, competitive D2 school in Florida, Eckerd College, and then the rest of them are spread between Division II schools 
uh, Division three, and then NAIA schools throughout the country. But again, I think you should be asking if you're a student athlete or recruit, you know, what are the opportunities that this institution is going to afford me post post my two year experience or post my my four year experience? Of course, we have every single guy in our program wants to be a major leaguer, and I am 100 percent in support of that. And over the last four years, we've had a, a few guys drafted. Um, and we, ha we have a, one that's still playing um, professional baseball now. So, yeah, I guess you can ask that question. But the reality is, as a program, I know I'm co coaching many more dads, many more neighbors, you know, many more sons, you know, many more brothers than I am coaching Major League Baseball players. So as a coach, yeah, that's, that's our goal. But really what I'm looking for is, like, like I told you earlier, we're looking to move these on, guys on to the, to the next step. It's going to be the greatest opportunity with the most amount of financial support. So we focus on academics. We focus on athletics. We focus on that community piece. You know, we volunteer with a group called Giant Steps. Um, they support families with aut autistic children. You know, so I, I try to give them perspective, or we try to give them perspective as a school, realize that baseball is a privilege. It's not a right. Um, not everybody gets to play at this level. Um, you have to fight for it a little bit. You have to grind it out a little bit. You have to work a little bit and show you want it. Um, but, but really, in the long run, go, going back to the original question, that, that, that student athlete, that recruit should be looking for what are the opportunities that this institution can give me you know, long term.